Hi everyone, before I start the video, make sure that you're a part of my Discord server by joining the link in the description box below. And in this video, we'll be going over A-Level Accounting 2024, October, November, Paper 2, 3, Question number 3. This is Paper 2, which consists of 4 questions. Two of them will be of 30 marks and two of them will be of 15 marks. And the total time limit for the paper is 1 hour and 45 minutes. Since question number 3 is of 15 marks, ideally you should be spending about 17 and a half minutes in order to solve this question. And in this video as well, we'll be attempting to solve it under 17 and a half minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. The following balances have been extracted from the records of NPLC at 1st October 2023. So all of these are our opening balances. The following transactions took place during the year ended 30 September 2024. Okay, let's go over each of the transactions. 1st November 2023, we issued 50,000 ordinary shares at 0 0.70 each. Okay, remember that our par value is 0 0.5. Only the par value will be recorded within the share capital. The remaining excess premium will be recorded within share premium. So let's calculate the value to be included within our share capital. That will be the number of shares times the par value. So 50,000 times 0 0.5, which results in the value of 25,000. Then the value to be included within share premium will just be the excess value, that is 0 0.7 minus 0 0.5, which results in 0 0.2. So that will be the number of shares, 50,000, times the excess value of 0 0.2, which results in the value of 10,000. That's all for the first transaction. For the second one, we made a rights issue of one ordinary share for every five shares held at that date at an issue price of 0 0.65. The issue was fully subscribed. Okay, so for every five ordinary shares at that date, we gave out a new right share. Now first, we need to figure out the total number of shares at the date of 1st March 2024 before the rights issue. So the total value will be 250,000 plus 25,000, which results in 275,000. In order to figure out the number of shares, we just need to divide the total value, which is 275,000, by the par value, 0.5. This results in the number of shares to be 550,000. Now we need to calculate how many right shares will we issue for 550,000 ordinary shares. So we just utilize the unitary method for 550,000 ordinary shares. Right shares will be 1 by 5 times 550,000, which results in 110,000. Now again, the value should be split into par and premium. So out of 0 0.65, Power value is 0 0.5, the remaining amount 0 0.65 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.15 will be the premium value. So the amount to be included within our ordinary share is the number of shares 110,000 times the power value of 0 0.5 which results in 55,000. And the amount to be included within share premium is the number of shares times the premium value which we calculated to be 0 0.15. This results in 16,500. Okay, that is all for the second transaction. For the third one, 1st May 2024, we paid a final dividend of 0 0.02 per share on all shares in issue at that date. All shares in issue at the date of 1st May 2024 will include the previous value of 550,000 as well as the new right shares of 110,000. So we have a total of 660,000 ordinary shares. And the rate of dividend is 0 0.02. So the total dividend paid will just be the number of shares, 660,000, times the rate of dividend, 0 0.02. This results in the value of 13,200. And remember that dividend will be paid out of the retained earnings. Then at the date of 1st July 2024, we made a bonus issue of one ordinary share for every eight shares held at that date. So for every eight ordinary shares, we're providing one bonus share. We know that we have a total of 660,000 ordinary shares. So for 660,000 ordinary shares, the number of bonus shares will be 1 by 8 times 660,000. Again, we are utilizing the unitary method. That results in 82,500 bonus shares. And remember that bonus shares will be funded by the company reserves itself. We first use the share premium, and if that is not enough, then we use our retained earnings. So it will only be issued at the par value. So the value of the bonus shares will be 82,500 times the par value of 0 0.5, which results in 41,250. Now we need to see which part of this will be funded by the share premium and which part will be funded by the retained earnings. For that, we need the total of the share premium. 
This is the total for the first issue. Then we also made a rights issue, which again 16,500 for share premium. So plus 16,500. So the total value within the share premium is 39,900. And that is the maximum we can use in order to fund this bonus share. So the value to be used from the retained earnings will be the remaining value. That is the total of 41,250 minus whatever is being funded by the share premium, which is 39,900 which results in the value of 1350 okay then the profit for the year ended 30 september 2024 was 41800 now we need to prepare the following accounts for the year ended 30 september 2024 we need the share capital share premium and retained earnings okay let's start with the opening balances all of these are a part of our equity which is equivalent to capital the opening balance for our capital accounts will always be on the credit side. So 250 for ordinary share capital, 13,400 for share premium, 71,800 for retained earnings. Let's write it down on the credit side. So balance BD 250,000. Then for share premium, balance BD 13,400. And for the retained earnings, balance bd 71800 always remember that for the capital accounts all of the increases will go on the credit side decreases on the debit side again increase on the credit decrease on the debit for all three accounts let's take a look at the first transaction we issued 50000 ordinary shares and by those ordinary shares, the share capital will increase by 25,000 and the share premium will increase by 10,000. The increment should go on the credit side. Now, in this case, we are issuing a new ordinary share, which means that the shareholders will pay for it. So these amounts will be deposited into the company bank account. So the heading would be bank. Let's write it down. Bank share capital is increasing by 25,000. Then for share premium, we have bank, it is increasing by 10,000. That's all for the first transaction. Now, for the second transaction, we made a rights issue. Again, by the rights issue as well, the ordinary share capital is increasing by 55,000 and the share premium is increasing by 16,500. In this case as well, these amounts will be deposited by the existing shareholder within our bank account. So again, increase, so it will go on the credit side and the heading will be bank. So within share capital, bank with the amount of 55000 and within share premium bank with the amount of 16500 that's all for the second transaction for the third one we paid a final dividend and the dividend amount we've already calculated it to be 13200 remember that dividend will always be paid out of the retained earnings and in this case we are paying 13200 to our shareholders in terms of cash so the bank balance will be reduced and also the balance on the retained earnings will also be reduced that is why this amount is to be recorded on the debit side under the heading of bank so bank, we are paying dividend of 13,200. That's all for the third one. Then for the fourth one, we have bonus issue. Due to the bonus shares, our ordinary share capital will increase. But we cannot just write down the total amount, 41,250. In this case, the total amount is being funded by the share premium and retained earnings. So we need to show the split of the funding. In this case, we've already decided that the share premium will be funding 39,900, whereas the retained earnings will be funding 1,350. And in this case, the ordinary share capital is increasing, so these two will go on the credit side within our share capital. So we have the share premium, 39,900. Then we have our retained earnings. 1350 now in order to fund the share capital the share premium will be reducing by the amount of 39900 so within share capital it's a deduction on the debit side 39900 and this is being used for the share capital same goes for the retained earnings as well retained earnings will be funding 1350 so that means the value of the retained earnings will now be decreased and this 1350 reduction is for the share capital That's all for the fourth one. 
Then we have profit for the year. Always remember that profit for the year will be added to the retained earnings. So now the balance of the retained earnings will increase, which means that we need to record this amount on the credit side. And this will be under the heading of statement of profit or loss. So on the credit side, 41,800 with the heading statement of profit or loss. Okay, we've included all of the transactions, so now we can calculate the closing balance. So balance CD on the debit side because we're talking about the capital accounts. Okay, we first need the total from our credit side. That will be 250,000 plus 25,000 plus 55,000 plus 39,900 plus 1,350, which results in 371,250. That will also be our closing balance. And we need to show this closing balance as the opening balance for next period on the opposite side. So balance BD, 371,250. We repeat the same process for share premium as well. But in this case, whatever amount that we had within the share premium was used for share capital in order to fund the bonus shares. It means that there is no closing balance because both the debit side and the credit side will be equal. 39,900, 39,900. Then for our retained earnings, we will have a closing balance on the debit side. Okay, for that we need the total from the credit side. That will be 71,800 plus 41,800 which results in 113,600. Now in order to calculate the closing balance, we just need to subtract these two from the total. So 113,600 minus 13,200 minus 1,350 which results in 99,050. Again, we need to show this closing balance as the opening balance for the next period on the opposite side. So balance brought down with a value of 99,050. And in this case, we had been given the working section as well. So instead of scribbling all over the question people like I did, you need to show all of your workings within that particular box so that you get your markings correctly. Now that's all for the first part. Let's move towards the second one. We need to state two features of a debenture. Always remember that debenture is a long-term loan, so that's a first feature. And it will have to be repaid in the future. And that future will always be specified. So the date of the repayment will be specified beforehand. So it will be repayable at specified date. Okay. That's all for the second one. Now for the third one, we need to see two features of ordinary shares. For the ordinary shares, always remember that there will be no fixed rate of dividend. The dividend will depend on how much profit is being earned and other factors as well. That's why there will always be a variable rate of dividend. Let's write it down. Variable rate of dividend. For the second feature, ordinary shareholders will get voting rights. So they need to vote on the matters relating to the uh, business. Alright, that's all for the third part as well as the entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure that you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of the videos in the future. Thank you.